it definitely affected our business our office is shut we have requested all the staff to stay positive so we have given our four month salary towards our staff uh, welfare During these extremely turbulent times caused by COVID-19, countless jobs have been lost and executives have accepted drastic pay cuts to help share the pain with their employees. The guest that I had the pleasure of speaking to today is a friend and a businessman of a travel and tourism company in India for the last 20 years. Sadly, it has had to shut down its operations over the last month or two. How is he looking after his employees during this time? And beyond that, how is he helping the community who are in dire need of help right now? Dear friends, a successful businessman with a heart of gold who lives in Dharamsala, which is about one kilometer away from where His Holiness, the Dalai Lama the 14th, lives, please Warmly welcome, Mr. Sonam Wong. Okay, hello, Mr. Yeah. Wong. It is so nice to see you again, uh, a year oh, after yeah. our pilgrimage. I'm very good. How are you? Good, 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 good to see good? you online. Yes, you too. Can you briefly yeah. share with me how the coronavirus has affected your travel and tourism business and how you're supporting your staff during this difficult time? Individually, I'm okay. I'm, I'm okay. I have no problem. But uh, it definitely affected our business. Our office is shut. We have requested all the staff to stay positive. Yeah, this this, this uh, COVID may not uh, last long, you know. We, we are four directors of the company, and I'm I'm one of them. So we have given our four month salary towards our staff uh, welfare. I'm, I'm, we are just a small company, but there are. I have few friends in India. They own a very big company. They stuff for more than three, four hundred people in one office. They are badly affected. They are, wow. they are worse than us. It's really kind of you and kind of all the other directors to share the pain. And uh, I'm sure that all your staff members really, really appreciate this because if I was in their shoes, I would as well. Um, I know that your generosity also. Um, extends beyond the workplace and I know that you don't like to talk about this but in the interest of helping to spread positivity and lift other people's spirits up can you share with us a bit about how you've been helping other people in the community who are greatly impacted by the virus we have a team we are just individual friends not a society or any foundation we are only individuals we are around 10 uh, 11 or 12 of us we just uh, try to help some uh, poor people especially the laborers from bihar you know the state where bodhgaya is located yes do you remember bodhgaya okay. i do so this for those who don't know bodhgaya is one of the four holy sites in india it was where the buddha became enlightened under the bodhi tree more than 2500 years ago so these people, they come, they go out of uh, their state for looking for a work, you know. Yes. Their road work, their road construction, in road construction or building. Now they are jobless. Now they have no money because they depend on everyday wages. A few hundreds here in Dramsala. So we try to help them uh, with the food. We are not doing it every day. We do once in a week. Uh, we provide them uh, one week or ten day food like rice, we have Indian dals, you know, the pulses. Curry, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 and spices, then uh, cooking oil, vegetables. And a marvelous initiative by you and your friends, people, these laborers and construction workers who come from Bihar, you help them by giving them all the essentials with the food. I think that is such a wonderful initiative. I know that you think it's a small mm. thing, but I think to them, it means the world during this time. Yeah. We'll try to do more. Yeah. I also know you have a bit of challenges as well in terms of helping them. We have to keep a police as a security guard, a security. If not, they don't keep the distance, you know. That's why we go to their house 
they are staying in a small house, a rented house here. Yeah. So we go to them and just distribute it, yeah. To me, it illustrates that, you know, when we want to be compassionate and help others, we have to do it with so much wisdom at the same time. Yeah, right? Yeah. So it's not just, oh, I want to help someone and then we just go and help. We have to think of the best way to help them in a way that works for them. I know that you live about a kilometre away from the Dalai Lama, yeah, the 14th. Yeah. I understand that he's also now taking the time to rest as well. Uh, more than two months, he is not meeting anyone. But his temple, they contribute a lot towards the local communities and many in terms of medical, in terms of food, in terms of a little bit monetary aids, they're doing it. Wow, it's much needed, isn't it? I just have one final question for you, um, Mr. Wong. What message do you have for people who are in a position to help others? I'm not rich, I'm not, neither I'm poor, but I can do something for my society. <clears throat> there are many rich people, I have many friends, they're doing it. In expectation, they like to go and take picture and put on this social media showing that we are doing this individual, I don't like it. I completely get where you're coming from and I think that definitely makes sense because everything we do needs to come from the heart, right? And the right intentions. Yeah, yeah. I guess mm -hmm. there are certain benefits I see though to taking those <clears throat> and to actually sharing different stories of giving and helping others because do you think that that could also help to inspire other people to do the same thing? if they do it with the right intention. In this world, you know, we always look for the solutions. But there are many who look for a problem in solutions. Mm. There is a problem. So if we try to do something, there is a, uh, some, again, negative person, oh, they are showing off something. But really, we are not showing off. Yeah. We are doing from our heart. So that's why, you know, so it's better to do in a silent way. Oh, I get where you're coming from. So you, you're saying doing a good act and maybe showing other people that you're doing it, other people may look at that and, and judge that this person is probably doing it because, you know, they just want to show off. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is yeah. happening. It's mm. hard to please everyone, I guess, you know, but I think the main thing yeah. is if we do it with the right intention, then and yeah, that's yeah. the main thing, right? I, I, I urge all the individual or societies or any big, NGOs, you know, non -organiz government organizations. I mean, help the needy people. Yeah. This coronavirus is, this has not ever infected everyone, but there are many hunger, hungry people, you know, children especially. I'm trying to be, trying to associate with the, one NGO in India. They help lots of lots and lots of uh, poor children, uh, orphans, you know, you see in India we have a population of 1.3 billion. Rich are so rich, but poor without food, they fight for a single meal every day. If we have a little bit uh, equality in our society, and there will be less crime, I think. I know I've taken up a lot of your time already, but I want to say thank no you so much, Mr. Wong. Friends, I hope that Mr. Wong's story and his sharing will help inspire you to reach out and help others in any way, small or big, depending on where you live and your personal circumstances, of course. Thank you very much for stopping by. Have a calm and peaceful day. You can see the downtown. Oh wow, look at that. That is the, that is the town where we were able to go down to buy something. Wow, that's, that's a good. bit of a trek, but then good exercise, isn't it? <laughs>